Oh, I'll tell everybody about it. No. Did you put up the boat, the other Instagram? Yes, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. another yeah. The one tomorrow. She's from cancer, not cancer. Ah. Yeah, she is. Yeah. 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 Um, that's actually oh, not fair. Oh, okay. Okay. That, that is uh, downtown. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? Yeah, uh, the other way. Oh, yeah. In that little yeah. plaza yeah. that's right there. Do you know what time it started? I think it was 11. One. Oh, so I like it. It's kind of late. Because one to six. Yeah. Um, uh, I um, I, I will tell you there on the, the whole way home today, I saw um, what's called chronic skin condition. I don't So the whole song's about him dying. Um, no, but somebody had just died. A, a, a group of that, yeah, and they and I we didn't know any of it. And the other thing is, my a hole had followed me there and was in ceremony with me because he had forced his way in. And so I just was, you know, in a point where I was almost hysterical and just needing him to be gone from my body. Uh, this part of life and. Um, Why? Because I'm sure they're wondering in this way. I, I, yeah. 
never get Started. Why the heck not, right? Do um, you want me to get started? You're allowed to. Did you want to do all the intro we stuff? That's why I asked you because usually you don't want that to happen. Alright. Have at it. Hey! Um, I'm sure the stragglers will come in because. It's a crazy Friday night and everybody had a hard time getting here. And we're also live. Hi. Hi. Um, we're on uh, the YouTube. Is that where we are? Yes, we're on, on YouTube. YouTube. And so if any of you guys don't know, we have a YouTube channel that if you subscribe to it, then every time we do something like this, it's free. It's just layered on there. So there's there's back things that are going on. There's my trip. I just got back from Ecuador. and. There's my trip to Ecuador and several things in there, and more of that's coming. And then any class that we do for free, we try to put on there. And there's like a blooper reel of Bob and I doing stuff and me eating a bug accidentally, and that's pretty funny. And <laughs> several things that are like that. Go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Anytime we have any of our free classes, we put all these things behind us that are upcoming in the community or with us. And so I'm going to do a slight, like, very average and normal introduction. So hi, my name is Renee, and I am half of Tradition School of Herbal Studies. And the other half is Bob Lindy, who's sitting here, and I'm a clinical practicing herbalist, and a teacher, and a mom, and um, a traditional healer as well. And Bob is pretty much the same. He's a Chinese herbalist as well, and an acupuncturist. And we periodically do free classes as outreach to the community, and this is one of them. And we think that everybody should have so much better sex and love <laughs> that you always should have this. <laughs> Um, this knowledge, but we're going to go over this real quick here, and Kendall was nice enough to draw this little picture down here and talk to us about subscribing to the YouTube channel. So the first thing is, February 16th, which is tomorrow, is a free event, and it's a wonderful event. It's been going on for a long time, and it's called Roots Seed Share, and it's downtown St. Petersburg, and it's by what would be the sundial, but the next block over, and by the Allen Witch. And it's where all of these herbal people and growing people and permaculture people come to just trade and give free things out. There's also free music and not free beer. And all the stuff there is free. free if you have extra anything, bring it if you want to, but it's not an obligatory. Like literally you can just come wander around. And the best part about that, besides that everybody gets to exchange seeds, is that there's so many facets of the community. Like we have permaculturists that aren't herbalists or people who do only edible walks but not herbal walks that are for medicinals and people who are medicinal and all of that comes together in this one event so every booth that you stop at to get a free item is a new person to talk about that has a specialty that is something that wasn't the one before it so it's something that just go and support and have fun and you can drop in and drop out if for some reason you can't be there get somebody to get what you need definitely like we do that as well that we'll, we'll send a bunch of moringa pods or something that everybody needs to have some moringa and so and I would add to it if you've ever been to a seed swap before where there was like five seeds one plant and ten people this one has about 500 people and we put up about 10 tables wow. so that it, it is a much larger seed and that's swap share yeah and, and that's with live music <laughs> and with beer and with fun and a free raffle and the, it'll be the first time that Herbalist Without Borders is there, which is very special, and you can get to know what they're doing. Um, it will also be a chance for you to come out and, and meet the West Coast chapter of the American Herbalist Guild and see what they're doing. And all of us are participants in that. Bob and I are teaching all day, but we're cutting the classes out early so that we can go. And we supply the supplies, and so we're a big part of it for sure. And so go and just have fun and just kind of see what's in your community. So that's something that everyone should know about in our area. <laughs> the next two events are something that I would really love, like it's not just the people in our area, it's the people online that need to know about this as well. So I have this wonderful teacher, and, and she's an international teacher as well as a national one, and she's the person who's responsible for me specializing in cancer care. Her name's Dr. Jody Noe. She's a dear friend, a sister, um, midwife, 
now a naturopathic doctor specializing in oncology and PTSD and endocrine system, has several books out, was a professor at several different universities, and just a fabulous human being. Because she's been treating cancer for so long, she has an extensive knowledge of using cannabis, and we're just starting to come into that being legal here, where we can have protocols and actually openly speak about that work that we do. So she's coming here to teach about that, and that's one night on a Friday night, and then the rest of the weekend, she's talking about the endocrine response, and that's always a very scary thing for people like, I don't know anything about the endocrine system, but I'd love to encourage anyone who's even remotely interested to try to come because she specializes in things, like I mentioned earlier, like the PTSD, and she relates the endocrine system back to why all the other things are going wrong, because that's the hub of the control. And so if we can get that endocrine system correct, then we're gonna have things like higher immune systems, autoimmune help, the PTSD help, sleep help, infertility issues fixed, like all kinds of craziness that comes from our endocrine system being wackadoodle. And she's come by that honestly by starting out with women and babies and stress. And I forgot to mention, she's also a Cherokee and has dealt a lot with her um, tribal and reservation issues. And you can imagine the stress that goes on with that and the disruption in the endocrine system that's with those, those areas. And so it's just important. One of the things I like about her teaching about cannabis in, in all its various forms is she's not selling a product. So a lot of times people who are lecturing on it are also trying to make you buy her stuff. Um, so she doesn't care really buy anything or not. <laughs> it's really, the cannabis lecture in particular, it's important because of her extensive knowledge. Yeah. She's definitely my elder. I'm not entirely sure exactly how old she is because most of her elders never really let us know. But she's probably a good 10, 15 years older than me. So she has all of that behind her. And she's been working as a healer legitimately from her 20s. And so she's been using it ever since then and when it was illegal for us to because we wouldn't turn a child down or we wouldn't turn somebody who had seizures or pain. We just were unwilling to say no. So she's at a point where she wants everybody to know what she knows and she's done so much research and work on it and she is wicked, wicked, wicked smart. She is, she's just so sassy and so smart, has the best charts ever. I always want charts and, and flow charts and graphs and I love that. And so it, it's something that if you feel like you'd like to know better for yourself and advocate for yourself, or you think that you're going to start working with that with somebody else, it's a good good way of getting your feet wet with somebody who really isn't selling anything and just wants you to know so that you can be healed. Next on the, the list is a free class that we're doing that's the herb drug interaction. And it's really important for everybody to know about that one. And it's, it's something that you can go to the YouTube channel and see at the point of filming because almost 100% of everyone we know is at least on an over-the-counter. We also have so much exposure to drugs in our water and our food that we're not quite sure of, that we don't realize that's happening. So knowing the interactions, both good and bad, like we can enhance the, and help a medicine work better that's not quite working well, or we can see what you know where we had a, a pitfall or something go wrong. And so it's just general knowledge of things that everybody should know about both over-the-counters and prescription drugs that almost everybody is on and how they interact with food and herbs. So that's going to be on March 22nd. And then we have a weekend, and we've been asked for several years to do this. Both Bob and I have worked first aid, medic, and large group basic like triage type of work, and we're medics in other professions. And we're going to do an herbal first aid that's a two-day event. It's very intensive. And it's going to be super fun, and it's all the things from a general first aid kit that you should have to what to do if you were in a large group or had a real emergency and knowing your limitations. So that's going to be on April 6th and 7th. And last but not least, one of our favorite things in the whole entire world is May 4th, which is Herb Day. And we have the biggest Herb Day in Florida, if not on the Eastern mm -hmm. Seaboard. And we have several teaching tents. And we have live music and giveaways and food that is all herbal related and it's all free. It's all just to celebrate plants as medicine and food as medicine. And my students and Bob's students will be teaching on those days and we will be teaching on those days and some of our graduates and some of our, um, our practitioners. And so we have many, many things set up. We'll also have vendor booths that are set up that are all plant related, including food. And so it's super, super fun and really crazy and all free and something that everybody should just kind of stop by for just because it happens all day long from 10 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon. 
and it's something that you can struggle in and out of as well. It's, it's a party. It's here, yeah. and it's both in the back and the front with the doors open, and we, we take over kind of like an art the festival, block, the yeah. whole block, yeah. and it's like all around, and we have tents set up for teaching. You already got one. I'm trying to con Bob into letting us have three teaching tents because we just run classes from morning to night without stopping, and so we need like a third one for real, definitely. And so again, another community outreach that there's no reason not to stop by, and you can take that opportunity to go shopping at the local um, shopping areas and see what's allotted to the community in this area. Our, as you can see, our, our mission, vision, and value is really about community outreach and making sure that everybody has access to their medicine and their food and all the knowledge we have, everybody gets access to. So please come. Is there any questions about that? We might end up erasing that because we're going to write on the board. Yes? Tomorrow's event. Downtown. Where is that? It's at it's at a courtyard area near the Ale and Witch. Like it's Ale, like drink. Se it's oh, off of beach. It's Second yeah. Avenue. It's, near Beach, yes. Yeah, it's Second mm -hmm. Avenue North and First beach. Street, I yeah. think. And so if you went to the sundial and went one block towards yeah. the pier, that's where it is. So yeah, you're right. It's by it's beach, it's by it's, beach. It's, it's, it it's a block up from beach. Yeah. It's, it's right in the middle of the all of that. Block up from Bella Brava. Yeah, a block up from it's Bella Brava. Perfect. The, yeah, Bella Brava. Yes. Right. And that's a and that's a come as you want event as well. So you just come in and out as you need to. And if you come later, we'll be there. But you want to get all the good stuff, so come early. <laughs> and what what time does it begin? One o'clock. One to four. One, one to, to six. One to six. One to six. Thank okay. you. Yeah. No problem. Any other questions? And anybody wants to take a picture before I start to erase, and I'll switch, I'll switch places with, with the BL so he can be in the hot spot. For everybody walking in right now, take a picture of this real quick. I'm about to erase it. It's three good events. Do it now. <laughs> it's it's good. they're good and one of them is tomorrow so take a picture uh, and, and it will be on the YouTube channel too if you didn't get it yeah okay all right thank you and I'm gonna do one more quick introduction just because come over here by me because somebody they might have started tuning in look at that camera so it's a Bob Lindy and Renee traditional school of herbal studies and we're gonna talk to you about sexual health and it's stuff that everybody should know and it's very common stuff and Bob's taught this class to his aging parents, and so I think it's a delightful, funny thing that he has to do this. So I love it. Yeah, they got a private class with no one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so That's, am I erasing? Yes, please, because I'll be scribbling random okay. crap on there. Um, so it's always an interesting class to talk about sex with a bunch of total strangers and and Just coworkers and everybody else. So um, it's funny. I, I've actually been teaching a related class or similar type of class for 30 years oh my god um explain why so i i, I had a, a strange career getting here four thousand different uh, professions one of which was working with um severely emotionally disturbed children in a wilderness camp on 880 acres in the woods we used to do third day community trips and stuff like that and not long after that i ended up working at admiral farragut and I was there as a, as a um, teaching intern. And it was my final semester. And I walk in, and they decided that they, were, they needed to add in uh, uh, sex education and, and drug and alcohol education. It wasn't part of the curriculum for the middle school students yet. And so the class I took over was going to be the very first class. And I was like, oh, I got this. I'm used to teaching kids like this. And, oh, and I used to work dropout prevention, eighth graders, and, um, and taught them very similar things. And, you know, that was kids from, from uh, inner city kids that I was teaching that to. And so I came up with the idea that, you know what? Inner city kids are no different from private school rich kids. They're the same. And so I needed to teach them the same information in the same way uh, because there's no difference other than monetary. And so I had a really interesting way that I taught both classes, but the sex ed in particular, because a lot of people, A, are, most of their knowledge is based on street knowledge, Google, um, and a lot of times they don't know the right language in order to use it. And so I started by telling everybody, any language is okay. You need to cuss, you cuss, I don't care. YouTube will get over it. Um, and, and I'll correct that and use the proper language if need be. And sometimes it's just fun to use slang anyway. But I had them write down three questions. We're not going to do this part here as part of class. But we'd have them write down three questions and not put their name on the paper. And that was their first assignment. And so I would base the entire curriculum around their questions that they sent in. And it was a 
really fun thing that I learned a lot because I didn't know any of the answers. Um, but they, <laughs> so what I was really surprised at was A, the teacher whose class I had taken over for a semester was this really sweet woman who came from a small town in, a, in, in the South and was a good Southern Baptist. And when she heard me running class, she would just sit in the back and blush. And finally, she just had to leave because she couldn't handle it, even though she knew class was wonderful. Um, and so it was always fascinating trying to figure out what people know. And, and like, uh, and it's funny, Katie's uh, in, well, actually, both the Chinese and the Western program. and and working on our degree in, in sexuality, sexuality. Yeah. and we just taught gynecology the other day in Chinese herbal class, and her back there taking notes <laughs> furiously, and it was like, so we were covering a lot of really good information because, you know, I'm all about practicality when it comes to things, and so we can get down into the minutiae of hormones, and nobody really cares because what's going on today? What are, what are we going to be working on? I want with? to say something about what you're saying. So Bob described the junior high class as being, he let everybody just put a note, like give him a note that said there's three questions, and then that was it, and the whole entire rest of the semester he answered these questions, and it didn't matter how, to, how it was written, and, and he just spelled you know, all kinds of myths and things that the kids are thinking. And the first time that we did this with our class, and again, there's several of you in here, but pick on Katie a little bit because she's learning more about things we don't know anything about, <laughs> like the transgender whole thing where we're inexperienced. Um, the first time I ever did it with my class who were graduates, articulate, smart, many of them graduated from college already, young girls mostly. I don't think I had, I had one boy in that class, one man, not boy. The next day, the questions I got when I got there were like, hey, can we talk to you for a minute? Like they'd all gotten together that night and been like, we don't know, like they didn't know half of what I was talking about and they didn't want to ask. And now I finally just blurted these things out. And so they're like, what is that? Like, what are you talking about? Where is that? Do you have it? Like I'm breaking out the anatomy books and being like, no, no, you have that, it's right there. Um, and so it was the first time that I realized I come from a real, real hippie family. I'm number two of 25 cousins and siblings that were all girls except the last three. It was just kind of like a normal thing that why wouldn't we, like I would be talking, we, it was just like normal, it was a farm family, it would just be like the normal thing to say, that I realized like, oh, you guys don't get talked to like this. And so it doesn't matter how embarrassing it is for us, everybody needs to know these things and we need to just be, it's just like saying arm, we just need to be very, very verbal. We all deserve to be happy and healthy and well, and half of that is that, that area of our body. We wouldn't just disregard an arm that wasn't working. And so it's something that we all should have in our lives. And so I encourage you to not be shy and not to think that a question is stupid, that we were cutting open a papaya the other day to show what a uterus looked like for something. And so, so we were, we did, Sarah's laughing, she was there. Um, because it's okay for you not to know, you just weren't taught and, it's, and we'll try to explain it. So please be very, verbal and um, not be shy about it and it took those that group of, of women basically corralling me the next day in a room and being like we have no idea what you're talking about the other thing is I've attended more than a hundred births at home births in the family that it was just like I knew the parts like I just there they are you know? so it was it's something that I have to realize that other people didn't grow up with and so yeah, Katie, you like There's that? The vagina. Yeah, like there it is. That, that's a service. Um, and so it's something that uh, please feel very open to ask any questions about anything that we're saying. But a lot of it's going to be basic and common sense, and you'll be like, oh yeah, and like just kind of getting that in your head and being verbal, like being able to be in a safe space to ask questions, no matter how ridiculous you think they are. Do you, it was just thinking when you were giving right. Do you want me to keep going? Nope, we got it. You got it. Okay. So. All right, so this Turned one teaching like junior problems. high students, I feel like he would be the expert even though I pumped out a bunch of kids so I know how the parts work apparently. So <laughs> That's what they said. So the reality is, you know, so the idea of this class, you know, we always try to get it around Valentine's Day as best we can, just around our teaching schedule. And I think we changed the name of it to this uh, class, but ultimately it was looking at sexual tonics, enhancement, hormone, hormone normalizing, using herbs, but I like to talk more about, even before we get to the herbs, about food and the role it has both currently and historically. And 
you'll find that most of the, like if you Google, like, good for, uh, you know, sexual enhancement, something along those lines, what you're going to find is it's all geared towards men. Like, we just completely left 55% of the population out, outside. We don't care. And, and so I try to kind of cross that back over because, yes, you are half the equation. And ultimately, there are lots of herbs that are appropriate uh, for men and women. Um, and there's a lot of crossover ones. When we talk about sexual enhancement, for men, it's mostly blood flow. I mean, it really gets kind of easy, and as long as that's working, uh, we don't have nerve damage and the blood's flowing, things usually work. For women, blood flow is also important. The engorgement of the clitoris and so forth is, is equally as important for their enjoyment. So those herbs that work for men for blood flow usually are super appropriate for women as well, but we have to add in there as well moisture. And so how do we work towards that, and that's usually a different set of herbs. And uh, the hormones are the same, and, and so men have testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. Women have testosterone as well, and estrogen and progesterone. So we have to be able to work with those hormones and understand how they function in the body, and the cool stuff we can do with herbs to make that stuff either raise it or just make it work better. And that'll make more sense okay. here in a minute. Real quick. So Bob said two really important things. Moisture, like dehydration and blood flow. So like think of all the things wrong with us every single day in the world. Too many allergies, we're trying to stop mucus, um, heart issues, not enough exercise, adrenal fatigue, too much salt, drinking sodas and juices instead of water, like, like go down the list. It accounts for almost all of any dysfunction we would have, just at being like life in the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. When we start to talk about this too, we have to also, I would say, I see a lot of folks, both men and women, where either there's a loss of function for men, erectile dysfunction, uh, for women, a loss of desire, um, as well as things like vaginal dryness and so forth. And the reality is, I would say, more than a third of people, it's actually about anxiety, not a dysfunction of their parts. And so a lot of times when we look at those herbs, we have to take into account uh, anti-anxiety kind of herbs that also don't negatively affect sexual function. When we look at things like antidepressants and anti-anxieties, one of the primary side effects is the loss of libido for both men and women. So it's like using the pharmaceutical drugs for that might make you not anxious, but then it also makes you not care. Uh, and so that's not always a great outcome when we look at that. But I always start with food. I think food is, you know, it's tough, you know, if, if you're in a brand new relationship, it's all good, like, right? Different set of hormones kick in, everybody's just excited and hot and horny, and usually everything's working pretty good. And, but when we're in a committed relationship for a long time, actually your hormones change. And so there's a different set of hormones that aren't forcing you to go chasing after that person the way you did for that maybe first three to six months. And so how do we, you know, we talk about setting the mood and setting the tone. And that's oftentimes something as simple as a special dinner, mm -hmm. a special meal. And I love food. I love to cook. Um, and when we look at the foods that are thought of to be aphrodisiacs, they're kind of a couple of general categories we see a lot of. One is, and we have to look back, we're looking at ancient history. Nobody just made this stuff up yesterday. This is usually hundreds, if not thousands of years of tradition where this food is supposed to be the, the aphrodisiac uh, food. They're usually digestives, because mm -hmm. people had really crappy food before we had refrigeration. And so they had bloated, they had bad breath, rotting teeth, mm -hmm. and we needed to cover that up, and we needed to help our digestion. You know, they might have parasites and things like that. So a lot of times, we have a lot of very good carminatives or digestive herbs that we think of as aphrodisiacs. And it hasn't changed a whole heck of a lot. I like to eat, and so I overeat. I, I'm like a dog with his head in a food feed bag. And so I go on the couch, and I'm like, oh my God, you know, I think at the end of Thanksgiving dinner, you got undone with the top button. That's not hot. <laughs> There's nothing sexy about a painful belly. <laughs> I was like, of course it's not hot. What do you mean? Oh, you mean hot. Oh, no, it's not. Um, so, <laughs> so when we think about creating a, a, a special meal at a, at a special time. 
we should also think about not putting out the massive bowl of pasta. Um, <laughs> as yummy as that is, you want to go to sleep afterwards, not get frisky. And, and so a lighter meal that's maybe special, and then we're going to talk about some specific foods that we can use to make that process easier and take care of all of those, you know, belching, farting, <laughs> stinky garlic breath is not always exciting. Maybe for some people, everybody, you know, there, there, there's some kink for everyone out there, but it doesn't happen to be most people. Um, so how do we avoid those things that as we age, as our digestion gets weaker, eh, very damn common. So I'll start with the basics. One glass of wine is a social lubricant. A fifth of whiskey doesn't work so great if, if you've got to get an erection. It's just not going to happen. So a little bit of alcohol goes a long way. A lot really isn't happening. So making sure that we're limiting our alcohol content and increasing our water content. It's such a basic thing. I'd say 15% of the erectile dysfunction I've seen in men is because they don't drink enough water. And if you're dehydrated, you can add some fresh basil into it. And it really changes it from something that can be hard on the digestion to something that's easy to digest. But when we look at um, the history of basil, a couple of hundred years ago in uh, Italy, that's how they uh, marked the houses of prostitution. <laughs> yes. You put out basil, <laughs> and that was an day. invitation that, you know, Come hither. We, we, we are open for business. Uh, and, and so sometimes. <laughs> huh? I was like, that is so funny. Like, I've never heard that. Well, think about it. it. And it's a breath freshener as well. Yeah. So, so when we were in Ecuador just now, and Sarah and Gabby were with me, and we just came back, there was a plant that was right outside that Rocio hustled us out to because it was blooming and it looked all like shaggy and it was beautiful. And she kept trying to, in broken English, describe to us the name of this plant. And we finally came to the conclusion that it was the whore plant, which we're like, yes, nothing like a botanist Who's teaching us. The term doctrine of signatures, which is a cool herbalist uh, thing. When something looks yeah, like something. Right. <laughs> It's, we say that it's good for it, and, and there's a the anatomy book? and there's a classic, uh, there's a classic like walnuts. Walnuts are supposed to look, be good for your brain, and they kind of look like a brain, right? Mm -hmm. And like ha ha ha, those crazy old herbalists—they don't know anything. And then somebody spent a couple hundred thousand dollars to uh, do some medical research to find out that there's some essential fatty acids unique to a walnut that seems to reduce inflammation in the brain. You know, makes it so that you're smarter. And, and so sometimes those crazy herbalists, and, and when we start to look at ancient history, there's something to it. And sometimes just the idea adds to the enhancement of things as well. So this is a papaya. This is a wonderful fruit. If you like, literally, I, I'm going to encourage you to eat the seeds, but feel free to take some seeds, take it home, plant it. Within less than a year, you'll have edible fruit if you get a female plant. There's actually female and male plants uh, of the papaya. but. Sorry, I'm going to use you as a model. Okay. <laughs> so, the inside of a papaya <laughs> kind of looks like a uterus uh, and a cervix leading into the I want, vagina. I wanted to pull the, the anatomy book out yeah, so yeah. bad because people are like, what? And I'm like, no, I promise. This is what the inside looks like. And those are the it's seeds. It's about the right side. And that's like where the cervix would be. And it's like, oh, there it is. Hmm, right so, there. It looks like a vagina and a uterus, and so it's good for it. And so it's also moisty. It's almost messy. Um, I personally love this. Oh, yeah, i got to pass some around here. Oh, we have, we have samples for everybody. So okay. I left the skin on because I was in a hurry. Who did you got? Show us. So we're passing and that in seats. Okay. I, and I have enough for a million people here, so feel free to take two if you really like it. Um, and. Sorry, I just really like it. But there's an interesting thing. I'm going to pass the seeds around as well, and just feel free to take a couple. The seeds are super peppery. So although they're not pepper, they're high in a digestive enzyme called papain, which is necessary for digesting meat, among other things. And, and I always like to tell the story. When Columbus got lost and almost died with all of his people, and they were eating shoe leather, and they washed ashore in the Bahamas, uh, as San Salvador Island, if I remember correctly, the native people there took pity on them. And one of the when they saw how messed up they were, one of the very first things that they did, 
They gave them papayas. <laughs> in particular, the seeds of a really strong medicinal part. And so, if you, ooh, wow, that's tough. Um, an easy way to utilize the seeds, that is fire on the yeah, those you, are good. They're yes. You want me to say it because you're exploding? No, I got it. Okay. So you can dry these, put them in your pepper grinder, and if you're ever cooking meat, especially if you know, like, who doesn't want good fatty meat? You can grind this up into there so it's easier to digest it. And again, looking at that idea of healthy digestion. You dry them first? Yeah, but it only takes about a day on a paper plate. Like tomorrow morning, they would be fine, uh -huh. and then you'd be able to throw them into your pepper. And grinder. I totally encourage you all to grow this. And if you go to um, Those seeds the root seed and plant share mm -hmm. tomorrow, we can tell you all kinds of cool ways to grow them even better than normal. Yeah. I heard that papaya seeds are good for male birth control. I've heard that. <laughs> but I don't know logically why. And I've never seen it actual decent research that. I would put anything in, um, and you'd probably have to eat a lot. I was going to say the, the, con, like the quantity and then when it was harvested would make a difference as well because it's going to be a higher propensity during one kind of ripeness during versus another. We'd have to see the, the like the actual chemical. But I heard, somebody brought that up to me about. I a year heard ago, it say too. And I started researching it. I couldn't find anything that I, I trusted. <laughs> and I, I hate to say it, there's some crap on the internet. <laughs> there's no. a lot of bad rumors out there. It is. I saw it on the internet. See, this is on the internet. It's all true. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna, you know, it's. You'll also read on if you like. I'm gonna Google papaya for medicine. It's gonna say it's great for skin. And I learned about this when I was like 12 or 13. There's a tree in the Bahamas. So think poison ivy, but as a tree. And it was like a 60 foot high tree where it could barely get marked. I didn't know it, but some Bahamian. A uh, friend of mine's dad, or uh, he was not my friend, because he had us climb up the tree and saw off a branch. And so we had this horrible blistering all around our arms and our chest. And my mom, who was a medical writer and had just started to delve into alternative medicine, was like, wait a second, I just wrote an article on this. I know that papaya is good for the skin. So she took the papaya, and she had read that it was the skin part. So we ate all the yummy fruit. And she took that and put it on these raw blistering on my arm. It's a digestive enzyme, and so it began to digest my arm and cause it to burn to the point of, I think it was the first time my mother heard me cuss. Uh, <laughs> so it literally is a digestive enzyme. So chemical peels, natural chemical peels, are made from papaya. Like if you left it on your face for an hour, you would have burns. So although it is a yummy, yummy fruit, and the seeds are amazing, and Eating it on topically is not where it belongs. <laughs> um, we got to talk about oysters. Eric, is there any questions about what Bob just I was going to say, stop me at any time because I'll babble on for days. Yes, yes. You, it's okay to drink like fresh basil tea that you get the same effect. Oh, God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Not only that, we would definitely use it as like bathing, like ceremonial bathing. A whole we, other world, but yes, yeah. a lot mm -hmm. of this stuff topically, internally, and basil. It's so funny. We, we chop it up and we make pesto. It's we do all decadent. these things. It's yeah. super yummy as a tea. And mix, like holy basil I had up there earlier yes. is a little, it's not bad, but it's, it's a stronger drink than yeah. most people would enjoy. Doing half sweet basil, half holy basil, amazing. The other thing is, so it likes to grow more if you cook the flowers. Well, who doesn't want like a bath full of the flowers and then the fragrance that goes with it? So making the flowers into tea or making them on, like sprinkling on top of a cacao cake, like a chocolate cake, super lovely. All basils. Yeah, all yeah. the basils. Basil, yep. mm -hmm. They're all good. Basil. Yep. Okay. Yes, that, all the they, basils. You know, we could argue they have slightly different. Mm -hmm. uh, one's soothing, uh, one's uplifting. You know. They're all good. <laughs> they're all close enough for government work. Mm -hmm. So oysters, like, oh, I'm going to eat oysters because they're an aphrodisiac. They are. Um, the reality is there's a couple of ways we could think about oysters. It, and this, it's always fun. It's, I, I always say it's code switching. Like, I can talk cool energetics. I can talk medicine. We can break it down into its chemical components. All of those are have validity. When we talk about oysters, they come from the sea. And so in Chinese medicine, we associate, and I would say Ayurvedic medicine, a lot of other traditional medicines, we associate a flavor with every organ. 
we talk about um, the genitals, and I would say there's debate as to whether women are more liver, where we need the, a sour flavor, or their genitals are affected specifically by the kidney as well. I, I kind of go with the men and women, both the kidney is about the sexual organs, um, and salty things and things from the sea will guide to that area. So when we look at an oyster, so sea products in particular, so if it was a freshwater clam, wouldn't have the same action. It'd be okay, but the salt water aspect of it, and those are the oysters you buy, um, are specific for building the energy of the kidneys, i.e. the sexual function. It's also high in zinc. And things that are high in zinc seem to be a building block for testosterone. And remember, that's important for both men and women. Um, and there's a certain level of L-arginine in there as well. And I'm just going to talk about L-arginine real fast. So that's an amino acid. Um, it is used, um, body, bodybuilders use L-arginine a lot. A lot of the protein powder drinks and stuff like that have L-arginine. It's generally safe and effective uh, and seems to increase libido, kind of a building block for testosterone again. There's a downside to L-arginine. If you have any type of herpes, and that can be shingles, that can be oral or genital herpes, eating foods high in L-arginine will cause an outbreak, and especially if you're taking a supplement. So like any of your men's formulas, bodybuilding formulas, a lot of your protein bars, cranked up with L-arginine. So what is spelled that? Yeah. L, then an R, like phonetic. And so the counterpoint is, and sometimes I would just say arginine, is lysine. L lysine is the counterpoint. It's the yin and yang, if you will. Um, if you have enough of this amino acid, it will counteract the, side, the negative side effects uh, with herpes. Uh, with that, um, but most of the supplements don't bother to put that in. It's like I want to be a bodybuilder, and Nobody wants to come near me because I have a terrible, you know, horrible herpes outbreak. Um, so it's one of those things that if you're either at risk or you've got it, but it's usually under control, watch your supplements with that. It's a sneaky way that causes some problems. And also there's a lot of foods, um, a lot of your meats, chalk, all the yummy stuff that we talk about today are actually fairly high in L-arginine. So just one of those things that we got to watch that. And if you're like, I don't care, it's you know our special anniversary, I'm going to eat all the wrong foods, take a supplement of L-lysine, and, and that will actually allow you to get away with it for a couple of days. But it's a fun way to do it. And the L just tells you that's amino acid. You don't have to have the L on there. Um, so oysters are your friend. Um, I would say oysters seem to be higher in zinc um, and also iodine, which has an energy and also a thyroid function. Um, low, uh, low thyroid, so uh, low thyroid function, hypothyroidism, also goes along with all the many other symptoms you hear about, low libido. It's very, very common with uh, hypothyroidism. And so getting a natural source of iodine, like sea products, um, can really help to counteract. There's a lot of folks that's like, oh, you didn't cross the magic line on your blood work, no thyroid meds for you. And so, but you've got every symptom under the sun, using some C products can really bring you more to that middle ground with an, a proper functioning thyroid. It's always funny, goiters, they have, you ever notice, like, why do they iodize their salt? Because goiters were a huge issue all over the world and is in some third world countries still. And so goiters were basically your, your thyroid going wackadoodle. Um, and it was from a lack of iodine. So they iodized our salt, it's cheap ass iodine, whatever, but we don't get goiters a whole heck of a lot now. What they found was goiters rarely existed along the seashore. People who lived naturally along the seashore ate seaweed and seafood and oysters and all of that. They never got goiters. People who lived inland, they all had goiters. And so there was this huge trade in uh, dried sea products for the inland people to treat these masses that they had in their throats. And now we just have Morton's. Uh, 
chocolate. You want to talk about cacao? Yeah, I do want to talk about Wait, cacao. Wait, I got cacao. I have nibs to pass around if you want. Oh, that's way better. Yeah. Well, it's not. So, so I'm gonna we'll put a little some some cacao nibs in a boat for you. Ah. With a little powder. You want to put a little of those in? Just and nice. put a little nibs on the other side. Mm. This okay. keeps everybody from falling asleep with us. So, so. Um, I do a lot of work in South America, and my my main teacher is our dear friend and sister. Her name is Rocio Alacon, and she's a, a botanist and a PhD and super scientific, but was raised in the um, in the Amazon in Ecuador. I'm, I'm I'm taking these; these are mine. Um, and we got the bag. One of the things the government did, we have we have hectares in a national forest down there that have tribes that live on them and is preserved. And one of the things the government did is that we can take your preserved land and not have a cash crop on it. That was one of the like caveats for them to take it as imminent domain. So you have to put a cash crop in it. It's got a pomegranate with chocolate all around it. Yeah. Is They're it not well, it's, it's, it's got it's pom just, it's a yeah. pomegranate with chocolate around it, so it's got the caffeine that the chocolate has in it. And yeah, so chocolate does have caffeine. Yes, yeah, so it does have a mild amount of caffeine. Not in it. Coffee bean. No, no coffee uh, bean. Not that strong. Mm -hmm. No, no. Those and so we're down there studying the spiritual and shamanic practice of using cacao for all kinds of things. And the very first thing she does as a, a botanist to us to split it in half and flip it over and, and start telling us how the part that we all throw away. So if you've ever seen a cacao pod broken open, it's actually got a lot of white, it looks like corn that's all white, like marshmallows in it. And inside that white marshmallow texture is the cacao bean that you are seeing broken up here, the like crunchy part right here. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be open heartedness. It's supposed to be, you know, very accentuated colors and preciseness and alertness. But the white stuff on the outside is the part that they all throw away. And we've been taught to eat it, and it tastes like the most magical fruit ever. Did you guys eat it when we were passing it? Did you ever eat it? The white part? Did you get to eat it? It's like something we can't describe as far as because there's nothing that tastes like it. It's a cross between a pineapple and an orange, and it's just so yummy and tart and wonderful. And the whole time in her broken English, she's trying to get us to explain what this part is used for, what it looks like. And she's saying all these different things, and finally I realized that she's trying to tell them that it tastes just like sperm. And I have to, I, and it's all, it's all American women sitting there, and I'm like, oh, oh, she's trying to say this tastes just like sperm. And everyone's like, what? <laughs> yeah, like what? And I'm like, and she's like, why are you looking, we have a picture of her going, like, why are you looking at me like that? And I said, because American sperm don't taste like that. And she's like, what? She's like, horrified. What does it taste like? And I'm like, <laughs> chemicals. Yeah, and she's like, what? And she goes into this whole explanation of how if we we're, were going to talk more about that. Right, if we were eating what we were supposed to be eating and had this whole full body of cacao allotted to us, that this is what all of our, our discharges of all kinds would taste like, male and female. And we're just like, like eating it all up and we're all gross and have pictures of us doing it. But my point is, that's what it represents to them. It represents a full and complete human that everything we need is in that one cacao pod, that it stimulates the mind, it opens the heart, it's both male and female, that it are intrinsically combined on the seed, you can almost not get it off, we have to get the leaf cutter ants to clean it fully, it's like a peach pit, you can't get the ends of it off, like you can't scrape it, that it's actually a complete human heart-centered, that it's both vaginal secretions and, and sperm, and it tastes wonderful, and it gives us euphoric, um, rise to your body and it gives you a little caffeine jolt so you have energy pumping properly and it causes your heart to be open and protected and she's just horrified that that's not what we're exposed to. Like she's like, what do you mean? And we're like, nah, we get Hershey's. I do, I, yeah. And I do want to talk about the butter. Yes, um, absolutely. And so so it's something to, to keep in mind that like we have these complete items that we're getting bastardized events or um, products from and we're taught to use it like we use the cacao to paint all over and do ceremonial bathing I was say, talk about that I did want to can you that imagine joke. bathing yourself in chocolate mm -hmm. and what that would be like and then secondary imagine doing that in a group to each other so this is something that she makes us do like we she stripped us down and said out in the middle of the jungle we're gonna we're gonna rub cacao all over and do all these massages and mm -hmm. it 
for us, it's it's insane and upsetting. Um, but she's like, what is wrong with you ladies? Aren't you supposed to be doing this? You're supposed to be doing breast massage and you're supposed to be doing this and this is what keeps you healthy and fed. And we're, we're laughing about it now. I've been with her for a while, so it just is like, you were always taking our clothes off and rubbing something on somewhere. But my point is, yeah, it's like that Sarah said, it's the 10th time we got naked on the trip, so it wasn't a big deal anymore. Um, so my point being though, that's the representation. That's the food of the gods. That's the thing they used to trade for, like gold. That's the point. And it's a special ink and cacao, too, we were using. So it's something that, through the lineage of time, that's what it represents. That's what it's supposed to mean. So that is the, the spark that our body gets, and that's what our hormones are knowing when we just smell that smell. So it's something to think about. The other thing that we were talking about is when we bring it to America or really anywhere, and Bob's cutting it all up, I would bit it into pieces for you. Um, we separate the parts. And I was talking about the cocoa butter. That's one of the best things that we have for all kinds of, of um, illnesses. And we make all of our medicines that are going to be internally accepted like a suppository, both vaginal and anal, in cocoa butter because it's just such a healing item. And it dissolves on body heat contact and it gets soaked into the tissues, and it's exactly what was supposed to be there in that whole human representation. So we'll put it on all kinds of things. Bob's cutting up one of them for you. And yeah, the cocoa butter, but this is, we, we have to show you guys, I'm gonna pull one out. Yeah, we don't have these anymore. Uh, yeah, and we do, we do have somebody making them for us that has re doing a really super good job. So this is the medicine, and this would be infused with medicine. And I, ooh, this is a rough one. This is a killy shit one. And so and, and so that's what it looks like. And we keep them in the refrigerator or freezer so they don't melt, but it's something that we've learned, like this has medicine in it. This is a dose of medicine and it would just dissolve and that would be fine. So when I say to you guys, like now they come in like chocolate chip shapes. So you can see it just be a tiny little part at the top. You should be using that for all kinds of rashes, all kinds of dryness, including like topical anywhere else, hair, skin, armpits everywhere, but it's also safe internally so that you can use this to make your medicine. So I'm testing around, just grab a little problem, you can scrap, stretch it off your fingernail, but just kind of like put it between your fingers or rub it on your arm and it should, even I though it's got herbs in there, it will start to melt as it warms up. Um, I'm just freezing cold right now. What so was your question? Thing. So if you want to use that as a vaginal lubricant, yes. how much you use? Okay, so how, listen. How okay, so hold on. Hold on. This we're going to correct this. Like we're going to, because this is because we've gotten feedback. Hold on, Katie, don't forget. So this, so listen, because we're like, no, no, no. But we don't have those anymore. So. I know, but but this is, because this is about a gram and a half. Can't we make them ourselves? Yes. So totally yes. Can. So this is a dose, okay? We've been told, plus we've all used them, because I make us all use them. We've been told that this is too much. Way, way, way yeah. too much. I'm talking messy. about just a, a, just a drop. Yes, uh huh. Not yeah. only that, the portion you have right there, if you did it the night before, the next day night, I like 24 hours later, it would still be fine. Think, oh, I'm totally ah. oh, he's I, not I, getting I, it two nights in a row. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm, what I'm think, saying, think what I'm saying is, is you put it in the night before and you're still fine the next day, because your body absorbs what it needs, but it's really a healer. It's not just a lubricant. It's a healer. Mm -hmm. So it's making everything okay for the next night as well. And, and you've got a couple of options because, you know, the problem with a lot of the sexual lubes is you're like, all right, stop everything. Stop production. Got to slather this crap That's all over. That's my point right there. And it's, it's like horrible you do the night tasting. It's messy. It, it's not always yeah, very good stuff. So this is something that can be inserted up to, you know, if you need... Yes, the night before kind of thing, but a lot of times it's like you know, an hour before, a half mm -hmm. an hour before, that it's it's going to just start to melt and it will have just a wonderful amount of lubrication. And it's a bonus. It's edible and tastes good. So, it tastes like chocolate. Hold on, chocolate hold on. Though. The one that he's passing around has herbs in it. And yeah, yes, you, it does could, not taste good, you could but. eat it, but it doesn't taste good. Oh, this uh, is herbal. Yeah, yeah, that has yeah, extra herbs in it, so it's just I had one open. Yeah, but blah, 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 where do we get it? 
Yeah. <laughs> so we'll talk about it. I, I, was oh, looking, yeah. I was looking to see if we had some there. Oh my god. I, I think it's out of the house. Why did you eat? Because um, I wanted to see which one it was. I think it's this, this is the one, one for yeast infection. Yeah. So it's yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's also probably like crying. Oh my gosh. Let Katie ask so, her question because she's gonna yeah, forget. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. Just be careful though with condom use. Yes. I agree. Thank We're you. gonna we'll, we'll okay. correct it right now. Mm -hmm. But I I would oh say you you know rolling out health food stores and stuff will have um what they say is the cocoa butter. But it usually has a bazillion different ingredients in there where you probably don't want to put that in, in anywhere. And, and so, look, it should just have one ingredient. It should be hard so, and chalky like this. So I can tell you, exactly. Okay, so at Rolling Oats, there's an organic brand. It's where the cacao is. It's all the way farthest to the freezer section in a little bag like this. And for real... You can just break off a chip of it. You can get it here if you need to. You can get it here. Like we Although always we have it. See it so. Yeah, but we have it. <laughs> and literally, whatever is the amount you want to break off. But we also teach how to make the suppositories. And one of our students is now making them, and she sells out constantly. Oh, Kelly. Oh, Kelly awesome. That's great. And so, so what, be here or be here. what Katie was talking about, any fat breaks down condoms. Or oil. So any, so that's a fat. Yep. So any fat breaks down condoms. So it's going to be anything that's a natural lubrication is going to probably break down a condom. So just FYI to that. That's a latex condom, right? What about the lambskin? I don't know. Uh, they, they're the same because I was looking into that. Yeah, I wouldn't I, I don't have, doubt I don't, it. Yeah. I have no idea. Oh, other questions on that? And did you say um, about part opening properties yeah. of cacao? Oh. I did. <laughs> so, so cacao is very, very important to us for many reasons. And that's why you have like the chocolate body paint. Yes. I just want to know, um, where and when you teach how to make them. Oh, I will make sure you have a flyer before you leave. And just a very, very basic, we'll, we'll do a medicine making class, but we, our very basic first herbal class addresses it. Uh, and you'll be able to do it, and I'll be able to do it. Medicine 101? I talk about it. We okay. talk about it. We I was don't gonna do say, it, you know, we talk about it. I was going to say, it's probably our advanced students. It's it. well, well, I'll tell you, like, we could definitely, uh, like, I'll, I'll talk to you when we're done. I'll make them. <laughs> it's super easy. Yeah, I'll make them. them. There, there's also our primary textbook for medicine making is the Medicine Maker's Handbook James by James Green. Green that horse penis, I think there's dog testicles, and there's like oh a whole slew God. of critters.